Um, we've followed along the bouncing ball of all to do with Donald Trump and legal troubles. And while I think that, uh, you know, the most dispassionate way of looking at things is he was rather resistant to the result of the 2020 election. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about what happened in a New York courtroom today. Now, last week, a judge basically blew up his entire business. Now, whatever the case was, this was supposedly because of fraud. But as you pointed out on your show today, he paid back the very loan that supposedly was built on fraud. Nobody is the victim, yet still this judge has turned around and found a way to effectively signal the end of the Trump dynasty in New York. Mm -hmm. This is so grossly unfair. So they are accusing him of fraud in applying for bank loans that he paid back in full that have the banks on the sidelines saying, we're good, we're fine, we're not complaining. He totally paid us back. And we knew he'd pay us back, and we're not even alleging even a late payment by Trump. He, we're, we're fine. What are you doing here? But Letitia James, the attorney general of the state of New York, who is entirely a political animal, has come at this with the full fervor of the government to try to shut down his business because they're saying when applying for these loans, he overstated the value or size or both of his New York apartment and his existing assets. And thus the loans were given to him on allegedly more favorable terms than he could have gotten had he put down the truth. Well, who would be the person withstanding to raise such a claim? The banks. They would say, hey, you know what? We could have gotten a little higher interest rate if you had told us the truth. Give us back some money. No, they're not saying that. They're like, we're fine. So it's only Letitia James now trying to make a civil matter and successfully out of the very criminal matter that was rejected it was, this was rejected by the same rabid partisan DA who's trying to criminalize Trump's other bookkeeping error where he didn't properly document, document his hush money payment to Stormy Daniels, the porn star. I mean, if this isn't an all-all onslaught to destroy the man, I don't know what is. It's all in. Everybody, the civil, the criminal, the federal, the state, they want him in jail. And if he's not going to jail, they want to make sure he has no money and has no way of making uh, you know, a living. A lot of people who have uh, for a long time tried to point out many of the problems with the, the American justice system talk about a lot of the theatrics of the justice system. And I've got to say that be it the mugshot, be it the perp walk, or be it what we saw today when cameras were not expected to be inside the courtroom, but they weren't inside the courtroom for the proceedings. They were inside the courtroom so they could be file footage, finally, of Donald Trump sitting there as a defendant. But it was everyone was on show. Everyone knew the cameras were going to be there, obviously, apart from Trump, which is part of the theatre here. So you've got the Attorney General sitting there glaring at him as if he's a mass murderer. Mm -hmm. Then the camera turns to the judge, who's sort of, oh, I'm on TV. Now, the theatrics are one thing, but the theatrics really are the picture tells a thousand words. And we saw the full thousand words of... When the system wants to tilt in a direction, it tilts and it gets you. And anyone watching that footage can see, it doesn't matter what the truth is. The fix is in here. Oh, 100%. That judge, when he realizes that the cameras are on him in, in the warm-up part of the morning, looked like the senior at his high school yearbook photo. He was so excited. He took off his glasses. He smiled ear to ear, the thousand watt. Hi, here I am. I'm the man who's going to ruin Trump. See that lady over there? We're doing it together. And by the way, this is basically unreviewable because no court is going to get into the factual morass that is this case. I've been clever enough to do it based on facts that are really hard to review and reverse. <laughs> I mean, he's enjoying it. And poor Trump is over there scowling. He gave a press conference right before he went in because he's now just trying to turn it into a political point for himself. He knows he's lost. The judge issued a summary judgment order against Trump on virtually all of the case last Friday. He He's already lost. Trump is lost. Letitia James, the AG, has won. And his businesses are probably going to go into receivership. He's not going to be running them anymore. His kids aren't going to be running them anymore. Um, he, they can't make decisions, business decisions about them. How do you think that's going to go for the Trumps? And there's all, whatever's remaining alive is now going to take the next three months of trial before this guy, who again is like a little to my left. I look better with my left. If you could just zoom in and without the glass, that'd be great. That's, yeah, thank you. Okay. And if the lighting, if you could just pet up a little bit with the camera, per perfect. That's him. And Letitia James, of course, scowling. I mean, that's her face, but scowling at Donald Trump, you know, as soon as she realizes the camera's on her. No, 
hey, Ms. James, we get it. You hate him. Trust us. You've made that perfectly clear. But meanwhile, yeah. it's like Trump somehow finds a way to, you know, come out there, make the most of it, offer some humor, say what he thinks about the judge. He thinks he's racist. He thinks Letitia James is racist. I mean, in any other sane world, this would be madness to say before your trial starts, but it's Trump world. So he has no powers here, but to sort of mock it and try to diminish it as a forum. Yeah, justice is supposed to be blind. Uh, it's supposed to be sober. It's not meant to be striking a pose for a camera Madonna Vogue style.